Okay, we've uh, passed back into Israel from the West Bank. We're gonna go get some lunch. And I gotta tell y'all, my heart, uh, is this whole trip just continues to break as I go back and forth across the West Bank and back into Israel. And just to see the effects of this war and the beauty of the people, both sides, is, uh, it's just, it's more than this film will allow me to talk about or say because it's so politically fired up. But um, there's people, there are real people in the middle of all of this political mess, social mess, cultural mess, religious mess. There are real people that are hurting and haven't been, haven't made money in four or five months since October the 7th on both sides. And we're seeing the devastation of that as we are the first tourist to come back in. My wife and I traveled to a place where war is happening. Not just to tour the Holy Land, but more importantly, to spread a very important message to all people, all image bearers of God. And that message is this, you are not forgotten and you are greatly loved. Welcome to the video, and welcome to the Temple Mount. We're walking there right now. I'm not supposed to say that word, that's okay. We're the only ones here, we're the only tourists. Uh, as you can see, very, very protected here. It is a, yeah. Okay, you ready? The hottest spot in the world. You could probably say that. We're the only tourists, and we are far outnumbered by security and armies and it is a testament that there is a spiritual battle right here there is spiritual war happening right here it is evident and it is evident in the machine guns it's evident in the uh, the zealousness I'll let you kind of connect the dots as you choose the viewer connect the dots with what I'm saying but it is super intense and, uh, and it's raining and you can cut the tension with a knife and we're on holy ground right here this is the spot where half the Bible takes place really I mean this is the spot where Jesus flipped the tables on the money changers this is the spot of the Solomon's temple and Nehemiah's temple and then rebuilt by Herod and then destroyed by Nero 70 AD all right here in fact that direction Mount of Olives Garden of Gethsemane that direction the old city of Jerusalem all within the ancient walls walking up towards the what I'm not supposed to say is the Temple Mount what I'm supposed to say politically is the Dome of the Rock up the ancient steps honestly I didn't think I was gonna be able to film but uh, they let us they let us film because we're the only ones here This is the spot of the, the first spot of the, the first temple made by Solomon, King Solomon, after order of King David, his dad, his father, ordained by God himself, who said, I will build my house. It is now occupied by another spiritual force. Let the reader understand. <laughs> it's just crazy right here on the spot of what used to be the Holy of Holies. The Ark of the Covenant housed here. As thousands of years are gone by, the 3,000 years since the first temple, uh, it would have been built on top of things. And so wherever that water's going, down under the ground, 50 feet or so straight below 
as civilizations built 3,000 years uh, on top of rubble as it was destroyed uh, twice, once by the Babylonians and once by uh, the Romans, completely crushed and destroyed and then rebuilt because Muhammad had a vision of a faraway place where he rode a donkey through the sky. And then someone said, oh, that's the place that Muhammad was talking about, so they built this here. Just It's conveniently on top of a very specific location that is in a very specific battle. Let the reader understand. Surreal, huh? Yeah, I got that. As soon as we stepped up on those steps, I got that same feeling right here that I did in that tomb. It's insane. Wall. Standing room only, this close, filled with Muslims. I've washed it from the from the Mount of Olives, all bowing down in unison. Al Akbar, all bowing down. This just nothing but floor mats and everybody bowing. This place is loaded. I've never seen it with the Jews. They're allowed to come up for a while. They couldn't even come up. Now they can come up. They just can't go in. They, no, nobody who's, you gotta be a Muslim to go inside of these holy shrines. You're not gonna see the rock. Um, so the rock is inside there. You know what it is though? When you go in there and you take a good look at it, you know what it is? What? The rock. Yeah. It's a rock. It's a rock. Uh, interesting oh. history if y'all want to look up what that rock he's talking about is. That's the dome of the spirits back there. And there's a large number of people who think that that is actually the location of the Holy of Holies. Not this. Which which place? That little tiny dome with the gray the gray top. The okay. one right there in the middle. That's the dome of the spirits. So why is it empty? It's empty because of the, uh, the war going on in Gaza. And there's no tourists in Israel. And on top of that, it's raining, so um, all of that. has kind of led to us to be the only ones here at a very, very special time. On this whole trip so far, the Lord has shown us favor for some reason. In His kindness, He has let us see things in a time when no one gets to see it, uh, and things that you're not supposed to see, partly because of the rain, partly because of the war in Gaza, but, but all of these things, I don't, I don't know, uh, besides just gratefulness, that we've been able to... Here we are, just some Americans up here in, on the Temple Mount, uh, in front. It'll never be this way again. It'll never be this way, probably. Yeah. Were you saying, did you talk, were you talking about um, how it's this generation who's getting to see all of this? Because it's just now things, a lot of things are getting to be unearthed. Not this, obviously. Yeah, well, the, this too. Um, this is a very interesting time when this generation, us, viewers and me, that we get to see things that are being unearthed um, because this was a wasteland for a long time uh, and not really thought of uh, because it was under Turkish reign and then the Crusaders took it and then uh, the Muslims took it and uh, Jordan had it for, for a long time. This was Jordan and not until 1948 uh, after the Holocaust, after the war, uh, when when Israel became a nation state again, regaining after 2,000 years, regaining the nation that they had had for thousands of years before that. Um, and so because of that, uh, the area was secured again and it was excavated and money was brought in here and trees were planted. I mean, there were no trees in Israel because they were all burned down because of so many wars and so many crusades and, and from enemies that don't even exist anymore, fighting against each other. Uh, uh, trees were cut down, all the, but now it's be, the, the country is beautiful again. There's tr pine trees and fruit trees and banana trees so and beautiful. date trees and, and fig trees and it's just bountiful and green and beautiful and uh, the excavations have brought up just incredible architecture and in ancient Roman cities and and to our interest all the biblical history that's now being unearthed and we're literally our grandparents didn't even get to see this our great-grandparents this would have been a barren wasteland no one went to Israel in fact Mark Twain wrote about traveling to Israel in the 19th century and he talked about it being a wasteland of 
that not even lizards would want to live here, basically. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean for us? Besides, we're grateful. Well, yeah, and we've been we've been talking about you know A, B, and C. Uh, certain things are yes, this just happened here. Some things are we don't could be, and some things are no, we don't think so. But either way, we're getting to see so many A's that are evidence of what the Bible says and the truth of God's word, and it's just so incredible. Yeah. So what she's saying, we've said in the last few episodes, is the A means it happened. B means we think it happened, or no, I'm sorry, here. Here, <laughs> it all this stuff happened, but. Um, a is it happened here. B is we have good evidence that it happened here. And C is most likely did not happen here, it happened somewhere else. So what's the A here? The A is the Solomon's Temple, followed by Nehemiah who rebuilt it, and then Herod who rebuilt that temple. We call it Temple 2. The second temple was here, uh, which is what the temple Jesus came to and he spoke to. And he went to every day and then he retreated to the Mount of Olives right there at the Garden of Gethsemane where he stayed with his disciples and then prayed and was uh, betrayed in that garden and taken to be crucified. Um, here was that temple. Here's the temple that he cleansed, that he um, flipped the tables of the money, the money changers. Here is where he said, he told his disciples as they walked in here, they're all from Galilee, you know. And he said, as they're walking in here, he said, they said, wow, look at the stones. And he said, no stone will be left on top of each other. It will all be taken down. Impossible prophecy, as you're seeing. And even Rome liked it. And he's seeing this impossible prophecy that all, the temple would be flattened. There would be nothing left. AD 70, Jesus' prophecy from 40 years before that came true as Nero tore down through fire and total destruction, the temple was flattened. There is nothing left besides the, uh, the this very strange um, construction here that the, that the Muslims built uh, that has nothing to do with anything I've said. I'm not going to say too much, but I'm going to walk over here to possibly what is the... Hey, did you hear what they said that the Holy of Holies... Yes. Some people think... So this is potentially underneath here, what, 50 feet or so? Down there somewhere, yeah. Not for sure, but The IDF guys told you that? Okay, so we've been confused at why this is kind of in this corner and how that could be Holy of Holies because it would have been facing east. We're heading south, so now these guys are saying this. Is another very likely spot of the Holy of Holies where so that it basically would have been the back of the temple yeah. Um, yeah. where you walk through the whole temple and it would be in the very back the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant was true yeah. Um, yeah, Indiana Jones if you've seen I'm just kidding don't, don't listen <laughs> but so this is another strong possibility there's literally a security guy sitting in there at least it's not raining Whoa, look at that. Something's under there. Apparently there is a, in the marble, naturally occurring in the marble, there is a face that you could see on this building. Oh, I just got chills, man. First thing I want to walk up. I do, I just got chills. But why does it reflect another one underneath it? Very strange how that's yeah. man, I got chills like just looking at that. Got came out and told the the most important thing is this is the holy place. That God, God, not man, chose for his holy worship here. Huh. That explains why all of the world is fighting for control of this. All the world. If you add up all of the religions, 
Maybe you can help me out. How many Christians? How many Muslims? How many how many Jews? 350,000 religions. Oh, yeah, religions, but but how many of them worship here? Lots. So three, right? Between Christians slash Catholics, the Bible, Bible people, and Jews and Muslims, this place probably, it probably has half, maybe, or maybe, or near half of the world is focused on this place. Just think about that. Yeah. Cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Okay, so we're here in, in Bethany uh, in the West Bank. We're going to get to see Lazarus this great uh, tomb, and this is closed once again because there's no tourism. It's completely dead. So this is this tomb, Lazarus tomb, is closed. Once again, uh, the doors continue to be open for us. We met this man. And he said, I'll open it for you. It's closed, but I'll open it for you. So what's happening is the reason, the reason they're giving us favor is because they want us to go buy something in the shop. So that's why we're seeing they just have no money. There's no tourism. So they're like, hey, after you finish, will you come buy something in my shop? That's been the deal. Ah, sunshine. Hi there. Hi. Is he in there? No, Lazarus! It's <laughs> <laughs> probably one 1,000 year old door. Oh, at least. It's Byzantine. It looks like it's Byzantine. Yeah. So you're talking 1,700 year old door. A 17. Five months is not closed. It's five, all the time is closed. Five months is closed. So we're the first ones in here in the last five months. We're the first ones. Yes. And the Thank shop you. also closed here. Yeah. yeah. That's weird. Okay, watch your head. Please. Okay, here we go. Okay, go ahead. So a 1700 year old door leading down to a 2000 year old door. And we're the first ones to come in in five months. Claustrophobic right now. So the original floor of the tomb is below here. I don't know, I'll tell you in a minute. There's, there's room. Yep. Oh, wow. <laughs> Here's the tomb. Here's the tomb. Wow. That's fantastic. I wonder why. So this is this the actual tomb? Yes. I wonder why this one so, seems so big wow. as compared to the ones at the church. Right. The holies, you it's know. pretty so pretty close to the size. Yeah, because we could remember you went in and the you had the candle up here. Yes. Yeah. It's about the yeah, same size. Yeah, I guess that's right. Yeah. I, I guess I was thinking of the little the little holes in the wall. Oh right, where the body, where the body goes. Was. Yeah. Which Which I guess I mean I don't know. Could it be in there or, or maybe, maybe some were just bigger than others. What's what's this? Maybe that. 
additional I mean, we are so far down under the ground right now. Right. That's incredible. What's, your, what's your spirit telling you in here? I mean, something. Regardless of how you feel, or regardless of whether this is verified as the tomb of Lazarus, regardless, it is a tomb yeah. in the first century. Somebody was in here. Yeah, somebody was down here. Yeah. Somebody and some body. Yeah. <laughs> S O M E B O D Y. And maybe Jesus, as he yeah. called him back called to life. Him out. Yeah. That's pretty cool. We're in Bethany. Jesus yeah. was in Bethany many times. This is the town of Mary and Martha. This is the town of Lazarus. Jesus came here. Jesus called Lazarus out of a tomb. There were eyewitnesses that say, This is the tomb. Can we verify? No. Is this within a hundred yards of the actual tomb? Yeah. Probably yes. Is it within a half a mile of the actual tomb? Absolutely yes. Yeah. Absolutely. There we go. That's the information I, I, that's we know. A, that's enough for me. Yeah. Probably the Serenity Chapel, by the way, as early as um, 333, we said a pilgrimage unnamed said they saw the crypt. Oh. And this then 333, that's the beginning of the Byzantine period. So this area became a church. Oh. This is a chapel area and okay. it's been preserved. And as one of our Arab friend said, really thankful for the Catholics because they bought up all the sites yeah. and they're still available to us now. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it wasn't for them, there wouldn't be any sites. I mean, we wouldn't be allowed to see them. So yeah. this was preserved because of the Roman Catholic Church. That's, that's an ossuary. That's a bone box. Those are ossuaries. Where they, after the bodies decomposed, they would pull them off the shelf oh. and they would take the remains and they put them in an ossuary, so you, you could have an entire family or generations in one tomb. Mm -hmm. It's only being used for the ones that are currently decomposing. Mm -hmm. um, they found they found Jesus' brother, James, his ossuary box. Really? Yes, not here. But it, they actually found it. It was a big archaeological find. They was arguing whether it was really Jesus' brother or not, but there's a real opportunity it was. Mm -hmm. they, I can't remember where they found it. We can look it on the internet when we get upstairs. But pretty crazy. That's really so. Crazy. That's an ossuary box. That's where you huh. put the leftovers, and then seal it up, and then they stay there. After the flesh is decomposed, and they yep. gather that up. And they gather it, put it in there, and then grandma goes in there, and then yeah, they're small. The grandchildren, and then, yeah. So just these the go in there. No, this. Oh. There's normally there's a shelf that the bodies lay on or lay down upon. This might have been part of a shelf in here, but that's where the bodies lay. But they're wrapped, right? And, and they're not. They're not in. They're not mummified right they rot uh, they stink after they, four days and they put oil on them and things right but it's just it's an honor you yeah. know but when they kind of rot then you, you have the the cloth holding the body together somewhat you move the remains of it mm -hmm. when it's kind of nasty into an ossuary box seal it and it becomes part of the tomb it stays in there uh, so you can have a whole family using the same tomb so we were kind of talking amongst ourselves thinking um, just like when we saw the tomb in Jerusalem that is close to the area or similar to what Jesus, would, the tomb he would have been in, um, just like that, here, this would have been like a garden area. Yeah, here would have been outside. And maybe the level was even maybe lower than this, and this was the entrance, uh, just a cave, because this is a wall, right? That's not there. Yeah, so this was built in the Byzantine area and became a, a chapel. So that would have been an uh, era. So that would have been like 1700 years ago, about in the fourth century. They would have come in, Constantine era, and bought this stuff, this land, and preserved it as a memorial and built a chapel around it. So this, you could tell what is, what is old and then what is less old. <laughs> All of it is ancient, but uh, some of it's less old than other parts. But this would have this would have been a garden. We've been standing in a garden, a cemetery type garden with trees and flowers, and it would have walked up and said, "Lazarus, come out." It's probably worth explaining that this is a Greek Orthodox church. That's the ruins of it that they built on top of Lazarus' tomb. A thousand and a half years ago, uh, this church was built on top of the tomb 
and it is now in ruins. But you know, it's, it's part of the authenticity of this stuff is that if this church was built in the Byzantine area, era, you know, this is like an idea of what it would have looked like. So if this is built in the Byzantine era, this church, then that means there were eyewitnesses that lived here for generations that said, that's the tomb, that's the place, that's the place where Lazarus was called up. And there would have been eyewitnesses that would have easily called it out and been like, that's not it, it's actually over here, or no, it's, it's over here. And so it helps the authenticity of it that, that the town said, this is where it was. We all saw it. My grandpa, my great grandpa saw it, etc. Is that how you make falafel? He's going to do it inside, my balash of he. Please understand. Ah, sorry. I will ask the man if you come inside to do. Oh, okay. Thank you. You do understand. Yes. <laughs> so I think you take this and you make it into a ball. Uh, I think uh, in this one. He will come now. Oh, that's how you make it. Yeah, and, uh, like this one. Okay, he's coming to do it. Are you hungry? Very good. How do you say? Uh, how do you sign hungry? How do you sign hungry? Hungry. Hungry. Did you know that? Hungry. Davidson Center. Hungry. Hungry. Lunch. Hey. Lunch. Hungry. <laughs> yeah, he's learning. Good job. <laughs> He's learning sign language from the deaf. Yes. This is the Jebusite wall, 3,500 years old, that David conquered. This is the city of David up here. And that's the wall that he overtook to have victory over this area. Long, long time ago. His army was uh, in that valley right there. David's army. And Joab. The mighty man climbed up. So crazy what's what's preserved and even crazier what is under where we're walking. It really is. I wish there was a way like we could do something where we could just like visually strip everything that has been built on it away and see it as it was back then. We can do that with computers now, right? <laughs> yeah, because if you think about, for instance, so much of the first century stuff we've been looking at with Jesus and this stuff is almost the same amount of time has gone by between us and Jesus as Jesus and that. Oh, so we got a map here. This is cool. Yeah, okay, the old city of David, which is this. That's the city of David before there was a temple. The walls. Uh, the Jebusite walls were around here, right? So at the time of Hezekiah, we've got 
a lot of buildings, including the temple up here. Um, there was a moment in time when, remember, remember when the Assyrians were conquering Israel, the northern part, wiping them out? Well, as they were conquering the north, Hezekiah was concerned because the water source, ah, it, here it is, the water source um, for the city, look, it's outside the wall. All that would have to happen for the city to fall is the Assyrians take that water source, which is pretty easy, and then it's a dry city. They took, basically took an outside water source, chiseled through the rock into the inner city and made a pool. The Assyrians couldn't take their water. Then they put rubble all over that and collapsed it down. Climbed up this is into the city. This is insane. Okay, we're going to look at it. It's very steep. Oh, this is great. Oh, this is cool. This is cool. Oh, my goodness. It's one thing for a, you know, to see like a cavern. It's another thing to know that man dug it with a chisel. Got to get real again, huh? <laughs> Okay, so this was the ancient path here. See? That's the dry, that's the dry route. Go in there with The only reason we're not doing that is because we don't, it's too cold and we don't have we don't have wet shoes, okay. but that is really a lot of water. It will be at the back of your leg the entire time. That height is kind of pushing it. Yeah. Then I don't know that I would have everybody try that unless no. they were in good shape. I'm gonna go in here. Wow. This is crazy. This is crazy narrow. It's, it's not wet. When they discovered this in the 1800s. They must have been like so scared to go in for the first time with flashlights, to, have to. wondering if it ends or if it just gets narrow and doesn't and go anymore. Inch or, or, inch or two. This is what it must have been like when they first found it. Just more tunnel. As far as you could see, it just keeps going. That's an olive tree, bro. Olive tree. Those That's got to be a thousand years old. So these olive trees are. Check, check out these olive trees. That's it. They're about a thousand years old. Oh, these are the ones he was saying. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. Cool. I'm gonna be an archaeologist now. You're going to be an archaeologist? Yeah, I'm going to go to school and be an archaeologist. And I'm going to yeah. uncover the rest of... Maybe your daughter will. <laughs> hey, I have time. you got to have time to learn sign language. True. Had to go here. Well, so it's interesting to think that if we came back in five years, we would see uh, an entirely new tour because they're continually excavating new things, discovering new things with the new excavation. So this is something that's brand new as far as the excavation. This is all new. All I saw was that. Just that? This, this little walkway I'm about to go on, that's all I saw. Huh. And a, a little bit of a, this was all dirt. I mean, it looked like, kind of like that. Well, this is just one side. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a, big. It's all back there and they're still they're trying just... Trying to figure out, yeah, how far over it goes. Yeah. Little at a time, there's something there. Yeah. Maybe it was like a small place to bat, to bathe. Like another porch. Yeah, a little porch or a little small area to bathe in. I don't know. So a side note on these excavations, we learned d different people will do different projects. A university, uh, for instance, could, t could say, hey, we want to take this for our students for five years, for 10 years. We're, so every, every site is different. This is the actual 
uh, looks like the parks, Israel Nature and Parks Authority is doing this one. So uh, th there is just endless excavations here in this city and this country. Which just means we have to come back in a couple more years and there'll be even yep. more. And there's a tunnel. <laughs> so that's where it comes out. Oh man, that's where it comes out. This is where the wet tunnel is coming out, I guess. Yep. Is it? Yeah. So in the old days, this, all that water came through here that we saw earlier in the video, came through here and dumped into this pool. That's wild stuff. Kitty kitty. Kitty kitty. kitty. Go, 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 go. Trying to see the great Isaiah scroll before they close at four, and it is 3.49. Sagu. What? At four. Four o'clock? Oh, Sagu before. Close. It's totally? four o'clock. Yeah, everything. No, but it's not four o'clock. Four o'clock, it's closed. Right, it's not four o'clock. I have five minutes. I just want to run and take a run. Look at the scroll. I guess I have to come back to Israel. I wanted to see the great Isaiah scroll, which I, th I think is maybe the, maybe the greatest archeological find in the history of humanity. It's right there. And it's right there. Uh, it's the, what'd you say, baby? The entire book, the entire, fully intact, the entire book of Isaiah fully intact. Largest and best nope. preserved. Best preserved. Yes. The largest best preserved scroll that survived in its entirety. So including Isaiah 53, which is uh, all the 50s, which is the prophecy of the Christ coming and the specific way that Jesus died. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities upon him was a chastisement that brought us peace and with his wounds, we are healed and many other verses that describe the actual death of Christ, of the Messiah, came hundreds of years, or th this version, this copy of it, hundreds of years. No! Can he do it? Can you do it? We need to talk with them. We'll come back. When you come back? Tomorrow? Wednesday evening, four to eight in the evening, it'll reopen. Wednesday. Tuesday evening, 4 to 8 in the evening, so it, we will just all okay. give up sleep. So, anyway, maybe we'll see it on this trip, maybe. All right, back at our Airbnb, and this is my after midnight setup, because I still got to do radio, you know, and that job never ends. So I just wanted to show you all, this is my little workstation and Ant-Man is doing his little workstation over here. It's my workstation. So we have not stopped uh, recording radio the entire time we're over here. That is pretty much all of maybe a long video that you saw today. Um, incredible day, saw some incredible things. The rest of the group, they went to go eat with a local family that's hosting them and uh, they are missionaries and Ant-Man and I needed to miss that meeting because I need to get some work done and so to see. So um, we're here, I'm gonna say goodbye to this video. Tomorrow we're going to the Dead Sea. If you wanna catch up on this this video, this is, um, we're like seven or eight videos in of the, our tour in Israel. If you wanna catch up, I will put links in the description to the previous videos that have come out. Stay tuned, thanks for watching. We'll see you next episode here in just a few days when we go to the Dead Sea. Yee -yee.